All right. So thanks for coming, everybody. I know it takes time and energy to come on a cold, rainy December night in the dark dreariness. <laughs> But thank you so much for coming. Um, this is a little bit of the agenda. It may or may not waver. We're going to really focus on what Nadine has. She's a really amazing expert. She's been in physical therapy for 20 plus years, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like me. Like healthcare. <laughs> well, more than that, but let's say 20 let's years. That just sounds say great. 20. You know, I started 35 years ago myself. I was five. Let's yeah, just say yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. I was five. Sure. Um, started at age So 10. I want everybody to introduce yourselves because we don't get to really connect. I'm going to do my very best in this next year to maybe connect a little bit more often in person. We just feel, well, I personally feel that. Um, that I wanna be with you guys so I can meet you, know you, learn about you because I really get like six hours with you to maybe train in the very beginning and then that's about it. And so my goal this next year is to do once a month trainings of whatever kind, you know, rehashing information or whatever um, as much as we can. We're gonna try to get together once a month just to put eyes on each other and say, we are still here with each other. You're in the community, but we're still, you know, touching hearts at home all together. So um, why don't we introduce ourselves, how long you've been with this company, how long you've been a caregiver, who you've served, and come on in, Don. There's food here. You're welcome. We're just getting started. Come on in. Uh -oh. um, so we're just doing quick introductions, um, kind of who you serve right now with touching hearts, if you serve other clients in the community how long you've been a caregiver, and maybe one of your favorite memories from Christmas from the past or some other holiday if it's not Christmas. So, Char, go ahead. Oh, okay, let's answer the easy questions first. So I've been um, in this business for six years, three months here and then the rest of the time um, from California. Um, in California, I cared for mentally ill people that were trying to live independently. And that's totally different than this, and I'm trying really hard to catch up on um, taking care of seniors. Let's see, um, how long introductions clients serve? So I'm the administrative assistant, and I have a lot of paperwork and phone calls, and I assist Jerry. But I also um, go out when needed to take care of clients, and I love that so much. Christmas memory or okay, some Christmas of memory. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> when my family would get all together and I was the first one to have the first grandchild, so I got special attention. Yay. And she was only um, six months old in her cute little Christmas dress. Remember that? Yeah. And um, yeah, that was that's the that's my fondest memory of Christmas with the whole family. Okay. And then Shelly. I'm Shelly, and I've been here two months. I have one client, and um, and I, for five years I've been um, with a client with another agency, and um, I'm a sort of retired pediatric nurse, yeah. and um, so now I'm working at the That's other end of life world. with uh, <laughs> seniors, and um, enjoy that, and uh, I live here with my wife. And I love the memories of when my kids were little at Christmas and the few years over the many years my kids were growing up that we would travel back to the Midwest to be with our big family. Uh, they always do a little Christmas pageant on Christmas Eve with all the kids in um, you know, little thrown together costumes uh, to train the uh, angels and uh, shepherds. Uh -huh. My kids got to do that a few times when we go back. Okay. All right. Okay, I've been with Touching Hearts. I'm Dawn. I've been with Touching Hearts uh, since the beginning of October, even though I applied for a job and was hired a year previously, but I had to wait until I moved to the lane to get there. <laughs> um, but I also work for Idaho Partners in Care, and I've been with them since um, about April or May of 2020. Um, I currently have three clients, and my favorite Chris, one of my favorite Christmas memories would probably be when I was a brownie, and our troop 
um, was in the back of a horse-drawn wagon, and we were singing carols through uh, of the parking lot of a shopping center. Oh, well, oh. Well, well, that's exactly yeah. Very cool. All right, Stephanie. Oh, me. Uh, I'm Stephanie, and I've been a caregiver for 20 years, and I've done independent care. Um, so I've, I've learned a lot from all the people I've cared for. And I guess my favorite Christmas basically uh, was when we went Christmas caroling one year, and I, I remember that we had games that kind of break the ice up. It was kind of fun, but that's what I like to remember. So. Anyway, that's all. Awesome. No, no. <laughs> and you've been with us for like, what? oh, you've been with us for like two weeks. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> or a week and a half. A week, week, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe one. Yeah. I'm not the new one. I know. Okay, Hannah. My name is Hannah, and um, I'm actually from Colorado Springs, and I've been here about a year, and I've been. Um, here for about a month. Well, not even. Yeah. I have now November 17, I think is my hire. Yeah, not even a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and I've gone through a client already, and I've gone through a client that I never met. <laughs> <laughs> so, a slow, sort of a slow start. We got a call today that's very promising though. Oh, yeah. so, <laughs> I mean, it can, uh, you know, we hired you for that client and then she's not out of the weeds either. So every everything is, is so circumstantial. Okay? Oh yeah, yeah. We're just, we're just waiting for her Does to she give. she really, really have COVID? She really, really has. And the facility has been locked down for, since you left. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, yeah. Glad you're not there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I'm not there. I'm glad I'm not sick. Yeah. Um, so thank what's you for the test? Okay. Favorite memory of Christmas is when I was a child and we all met at my grandparents' house on Christmas and Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And it was always a big dinner, and I got really used to that. And mm -hmm. then as my grandparents got really old, well my grandfather got Alzheimer's mm -hmm. and um they quit doing it yeah and that's hard it's never quite been the same yeah yeah but just uh I'm used to a big family and yeah right now I'm out here with just myself and my son and he got in the, to a little bit of trouble out here <laughs> and um I came to until he gets himself free of trouble then we'll go back to Colorado and so be here for a few years and um i did just independent just um i i cared for somebody so they could be stay at home kind of thing and mm -hmm. uh, it was very light care in um until they died and then um i just came in like not very often like a couple times a month and I just did the stuff that they did come on in do on their own. there's a seat over there all right I had some background oh, so then I just got doing this cool thank you so Roy why don't you introduce yourself and you know he's the boss here <laughs> he's the boss of me <laughs> What's your favorite That's Christmas a, memory? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite Christmas memory is probably <clears throat> when the kids were working at a tree farm. Oh, yeah. That was really fun because we got a free tree every year. So we did that, and mm -hmm. they learned all about the different types of trees, the yep. spurs, pines, all that. And it was fun. Um, but going even farther back, one of the first cool things, too, was showing my kids Christmas vacation. Oh, yeah. Um, the, the, the movie. Yeah. The movie. Yeah. So that's kind of been a staple, in, like a lot of underlying jokes yep. as they grew up. Yep. So. And Ryan, we're just doing quick introductions. Mm -hmm. You're welcome to get food anytime. And then Nadine will be up. So go ahead and tell us oh, your, okay. like, how long you've been a caregiver. And okay. you've served, you can just sit there and, and okay. introduce yourself. Well, basically, <laughs> my name's Ryan, and uh, I've been 
here for a few months, but I've also been doing caregiving for a little while. So I'm looking for two different mm -hmm. agencies right now, I'm trying to somehow juggle that. That's why I'm late tonight because I was yep. with another client. So yep. I'm like, yep. all right, mm -hmm. they're yep. keeping, me, keeping me busy all, all around the clock, it seems like. And, yep. you know, I'm mm -hmm. trying to help out whenever I can with yeah. the food bank or whatever I can mm -hmm. volunteer for. And I'm really thankful for uh, um, just being able to, to go home for Christmas. You know? Yeah. So I just like, you know, I, you're talking movies. I don't know. Like I'll be home for Christmas. I, I kind of feel like I'm reenacting that a little bit, you know, except I'm flying. So, mm -hmm. so back to, that's where I originally came from up here from California. So where are you going for Christmas? Where are you going home to? I'm going back home to San Diego. Oh, so, yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. There's a yes, yes. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> and then um, Christmas memory. What's your favorite Christmas memory? Oh. If you have one. <laughs> we can come back to you, too, if you need to think about it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's tough. I mean, each each one is special that you get to spend, especially with my nieces and nephews and stuff. I've seen mm -hmm. their first like, Christmas is yeah. kind of coming up. It's like, oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. A lot mm -hmm. of mine are all foggy already. From yeah. When I was a kid, so. Yeah. So we are having a Christmas sweater contest. Kim is going to be late because she's coming from Athol. Who's trying out for the Christmas contest? There's one, there's two. Anybody else? Okay, so you're number one, you're number two, and Kim said don't vote until she comes. Uh, okay. I'm not voting, you're not voting for me. So there is little slips of paper here if you wanna vote. I mean, it's just, you know, random. Um, or we can share a gift, whatever, if you guys are the only two, I don't know. <laughs> Give food whenever. Okay. Nadine, you are up for the next cool. hour and some, and then she's amazing. Yep, there's plates. Yep. Hi, everybody. I am Nadine. I am a physical therapist and athletic trainer with 20 plus years of experience. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, you were five when you started. Um, huh? I have known Jerry for a year and a half ish, something, something like, like that. that. And Roy for probably a year at least, I'd say, something in there. Um, I have a, a wide variety of experience. Most of my experience uh, in work is actually in sports, in sports medicine. Um, but I worked in a spinal cord injury hospital um, for a while. And in PT school, you have to do acute care rotations and um, rehab centers and all of that. So have a lot of experience. And then, of course, have family members <laughs> that get injured and get older and whatever else uh, comes along. So, um, yeah. Perfect. Do you want to pull her in before we start? Start. Do a quick introduction. So, tell us like clients you serve, how long you've been a caregiver with us, how long you've been a caregiver, and did you bring a sweater? No? Ah. I didn't have one. That's okay. We're doing these two. So, if you want to pick one over the other, it's uh, a process of elimination. So, tell us who you are. Clients who serve, how long have you been with us, and your favorite Christmas memory? <coughs> um, can I say that again? <laughs> What's your name? Oh, Kim. I'm Kim. <laughs> how long have you been with us? Uh, almost two years, like 19 March. months. Mm -hmm. um, and what are the clients that you serve? Right now you're serving two. Right now I'm serving two, but I've served most of them. I, I think there's not very many clients that I haven't met. <laughs> Maybe just a couple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's your favorite Christmas memory? Um, that's probably not a good one to share. Um, a good one. Positive. <laughs> it's funny, but I don't know if it's more. <laughs> 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 um, Favorite Christmas memory. We are in the healthcare system, so you know. <laughs> um, go back to your childhood. It was from my childhood, and, um, but Ryan and Roy are in here, so I don't know if anything mm -hmm. goes. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. I think one of my favorite Christmas memories is, I guess, just being with my mom and dad, mm -hmm. and they're not here anymore. So mm -hmm. I always had really good Christmases with my parents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> All right, lady. Back to me. One of my favorite Christmas memories. Yeah. Two come to mind. I'm from the Upper Peninsula, Michigan, so just north of the North Pole. And um, one year at Christmas, I think it was 95, but I might be off by a year or two. Um, it was like 68 degrees and sunny, and we went jet skiing instead of downhill skiing. So that was interesting. Yeah, that was crazy. And the UP even. That was crazy. Um, and then another one, was, my niece was born on December 26th, and um, my she has an older brother who was just about to turn two and so my we had our Christmas and then my sister and her husband because she was getting induced in the morning and I got to take my nephew home that night and then in the next day we had a Christmas baby which was pretty cool so um yeah so uh, anyway so yeah my background physical therapy athletic training um main thing today is just want to go over some safety stuff for you and I'm going to give you just a few tips and I don't know touching hearts at home manual so I don't know what kind of stuff is covered or isn't so I apologize if it's all stuff that you know um but thought I would go over that and I did give you guys a couple of handouts um uh, just with, with some general information in there um the main thing is that you want to be safe you want to keep your patient safe the person that you're that you're giving care to you want to make sure that they're always safe but you also need to keep yourself safe right especially if you're doing any kind of movements um uh, you know transfers or anything like that you want to make sure you don't hurt yourself right so um we want to just make sure we've got good body mechanics and we're being safe uh safe with that stuff so a, a, a few tips kind of related to that um you know you wouldn't do this job if you weren't somebody that cared about other people. So compassion is really, you know, how can I help you? Because you want to relieve that suffering. And they're, you know, you're not going to fix their disease. You're not going to necessarily change their situation. But if you can make them comfortable and if you can do something in that moment that can change their status, that's huge, right? Um, knowledge. So, you know, if you're really invested in your, in the, in your patient, you want to learn, right? You want to learn uh, what you can do to help them. You want to learn about their situation, maybe learn about their disease process, um, learn about who they are as a person so that you can understand how to relate to them um, and understand and, and learn about what their, their learning style is. How does that person learn or understand you, right? Um, so that that's important as well. Um, learning a little bit about their family, you know, things that you can do to relate to them, but also um, in order to work with them, right? Learning um, what they, what is it that they respond best to or what doesn't work for them, what their needs are. Um, and then awareness, this is a big thing. Um, being really aware of your surroundings, of the environment that you're in with that person, including, you know, we're in this room, this room is carpeted, this, the, all of the chairs have arms on them, there is, you know, a table with stuff on it, what's on the floor that could be in the way if somebody's trying to move. So just being really aware of surroundings. What is the lighting in the room, the temperature in the room, the furniture that's in the room, um, noises, whether that's ambient noises or if there's construction going on like all things that can contribute to something that might um, impact the patient that you're caring for right so just being really aware of, of the surroundings then being aware of yourself right as well what is your level of understanding of the situation what are your what's your skill set and what isn't so knowing what you can and know how to do and don't um, knowing when you need to ask for help or do some research ahead of time um, being aware of any uh, uh, prejudice or bias that you might have, uh, you know, based on who knows what, right? But we all have them, that past life experiences. Um, and, and then a, a few other things. And, and I, I wore this on purpose, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. I'm going to take my sweater off right now because I'm going to have you just kind of notice what I'm wearing. Move this microphone. <laughs> This is a highly distracting shirt, right? And if you are a caregiver and you wear a highly distracting clothing, that might induce a migraine, a dizzy spell, a headache, vomiting, anything in your patient. So you want to get as simple as possible in how you present yourself. That includes crazy makeup. That includes crazy hairstyle, clothes, whatever. And, uh, you know, it's just being... 
and fragrance. Well, that's the next thing I was going to hit on, right? So um, absolutely, your personal hygiene items, your shampoo, your lotion, your perfume, any of that that might smell nice to you might actually really highly upset somebody else. So being as neutral as you can be. Plus, 99% of the stuff that's smelly is really bad for you and toxic for your own health. <laughs> so if it's not something that's edible, then it shouldn't be ever touch your skin. So we'll just say that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so being really aware of yourself. And then other little things, right? Like if you've got long hair, is your hair down? And if you're leaning over to help them, is your hair falling on them? So making sure that you, you know, that you pull your hair back out of the way. Um, glasses, if you wear glasses, you know, it might not be a bad idea to wear a little strap around the back. So my glasses, I don't wear very often. When I do, they fall off really easy when I bend over. So making sure that your glasses are secure on your head. If you've got hearing aids, making sure that you've got them in and on and working right? Um, and, and again, in there so that they're not going to fall out, you're not going to lose them. Jewelry, if you've got a lot of jewelry on, that is, um, can be distracting, but also can interfere with things as well. Um, and then the same thing for the patient, right? So just being aware of, you know, is it an elderly lady that has to look perfect every time and have to have her hair done and wants to have her necklace and her jewelry on every day and have her shirt pressed, right? So just being aware of what it is that they like or how they are um, so that you can um, adjust yourself. You know, there, I don't do great with fragrances, right? But if I'm treating a patient that wears a lot of fragrance, I have to figure that out, right? So I might be able to ask them if they're coming into a clinic to see me, can you not wear cologne next time, right? Or whatever that is. But when you're in their house, it's a whole different story. If they're burning candles and they got those Glade plug-in toxic things or whatever it is, like you got, might just have to kind of deal with that or find a way to gently have a conversation about it, right? But just so, you know, being aware of that. The biggest, the, the two probably biggest things um, with the patient for you to be really paying attention to or being aware of is the fit of their clothes. If they're wearing a loose house dress and you got to try and help get them up off the floor, that's trouble, right? Um, and then what they have on their feet, right? So footwear is really, really important. Um, so kind of understanding what the family's desire or the person's desire is in terms of what they wear when they're comfortable at home, or if they're okay to put on some slippers, if they need to walk down the hall to the bathroom or whatever that is. Um, and those are things that you can certainly have a conversation in terms of safety about, right? But just being really aware of that stuff. And again, making sure that that person also, if they have long hair, then you're going to help them. Is their hair getting in the way? Is that something that you can manage for them? And again, are their glasses falling off? Is their hearing aid turned on? Any of the other assisted devices, right? So just being really aware of your surroundings, and that includes you and the, and the person that you're with. Um, and then communication, right? So again, based on cognitive function of the, of the person that you're caring for, um, Verbal cues, tactile cues, when you gently, you know, put your hand somewhere or, or um, visual cues, directing them, that kind of stuff is really important. Um, and then making sure that you understand before you do anything, right? Like we're going to have this conversation. We're going to talk about you need to go to the bathroom. Great. I'm going to figure out a way to help you get up and get down the hall to the bathroom, right? Like really be clear and concise with your communication. Make sure they understand you. Make sure you understand them. Reiterate what they say, what their desires are before you try to do any kind of movement or uh, transferring with them. Um, and then uh, come to an agreement. <laughs> I can tell you I argued with my grandma a lot, <laughs> right? Um, so come to an agreement because you forcing them to do something is not is not going to help for your relationship or for the future, right? So coming to an agreement and an understanding, explaining if you have to dumb it down to first grade talk, that's okay, right? Um, if they're not really understanding from a verbal perspective and you want them to slide over, sometimes if you just gently put a hand or you tap them or whatever, just so really just kind of paying attention to how you're communicating with somebody and know that even if you're not in the middle of a conversation or communicating directly with them, they're watching you. So how you, you know, the look on your face, the, you know, those kind of things, they're picking up on that, right? So same as with little kids, right? You walk in the other room and you're swearing, they're hearing it, right? Even if you think they aren't, right? So just really being cautious about that. Um, so um, compromising when you need to come to an agreement, make sure that you're clear and concise with directions and instructions and vice versa, that you're following their wishes as long as it's not harmful for you or them, right? So
Um, ju just a few of those little things to kind of really be aware of. Um, and then I just put a couple terminology things in there. Um, and I'll give you my handout when I'm done, but I don't have an extra one right now. <laughs> um, uh, that you may or may not know. So, um, and that may be the family members are, um, you know, have a have a list of like, oh, you're helping to take care of grandma right now. These are the things from the doctor or from her PT or from whatever that is. Um, uh, so, learning what some of that knowledge that those abbreviations are. So ADL stands for activities of daily living, right? That is going to the bathroom, that's showering, that's brushing your teeth, that's personal hygiene, it's eating, it's being able to get in and out of a chair, um, those kind of things, right? So, so those are ADLs and that's mostly what we're going to talk about today. Um, and then some abbreviations are, I stands for independent. So if you see something, if there's like a, a chart or something that you're allowed to refer to or that is given to you, I stands for independent. That means a person is safe and effective to do it by themselves, right? So maybe somebody is great at brushing their hair and brushing their teeth, but they can't actually stand up and walk, right? So I is for independent. Um, SBA is for standby assist. That means that they can do it by themselves, but they might lose their balance or they might drop something and just need a little bit of help. So being really Really, really conscious and aware because you might need to step in and help um, and being very close by but not necessarily that you need to do it right um, and what is um, this just reminds me what is written maybe from the therapist or what the family describes kind of trumps the patient because you get a lot of people who say, oh no, I can do that by myself, no problem. And of course they can't, right? So something, if, if, if there's been a formal evaluation from a healthcare provider, you know, keep that in mind um, and not just always listen to the patient that says, oh, I know how to do that by myself or, or I need help with that or whatever, right? So they're just really kind of paying attention to that. Um, and then minimal assistance means that they're capable of doing, you know, a good 80% of the work and that you, they just need you to, uh, to help a little bit, maybe to help them stand up from seat, from sitting and then they're good the rest of the way. Right. Um, uh, moderate assist is kind of almost 50, 50. They're going to do some of the work, but you're going to need to help them a little bit with, with the transferring or, or getting them up out of their chair. Um, maximum assist means that they're really not going to help a whole lot and you're going to end up doing most of the work to, to help them or assist them. Um, and then obviously, if somebody's full dependent. So if there's somebody that is not capable of doing any physical abilities in terms of ADLs for themselves, then that's somebody that's in the, uh, full care. Um, and, and that's almost kind of the progression as people decline, right? Um, and the opposite is, is the uh, progression of when they're recovering from something, right? So if you've got somebody that you're just with temporarily while they're recovering from a stroke or from surgery or whatever, you should see those things improve over time. Um, and then there are tons of tools, so use them, right? Um, use what uh, what tools are around. There's a lot of assisted devices, and I brought a few different ones that we can um, practice with today. Um, so I just made a little list there of a variety of different assisted devices that are around um, that you can use. Okay, I'm going to put my sweater back on to stop the distracting shirt. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, also so I can put the microphone back on. Um, also, just to FYI, this sweater also I kind of wore intentionally. This is a pattern, a, a um, textured sweater. And that's another thing that if you if you're walking with somebody and they hold your arm or if you're doing a gate uh, a gate belt transfer and they have to hug you at all. Again, being aware if you're wearing something super slippery, that may not be great for them. If you're wearing something that is um, materials that people can be allergic to um, or like this has got a lot of texture so if you've got somebody that doesn't like that tactile feeling of texture it may not be a great thing otherwise this could be good because it might give you grip right so just really knowing and understanding the patient you're working with um, can be helpful I also wore pants and my own belt because the belt of the person you're working with is great leverage so if um, men will typically wear a belt women will not mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but use their belt um, and use if they've got pants with belt loops, even if they're not wearing a belt, these are great little things that you can hold on to um, as well. So um, a lot of kind of built in tools in, in that regard. Um, uh, okay, I'm just gonna show you a couple things that I have in my little bag of tricks here. <clears throat> 
Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, tread socks. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with those hospital socks and the different colors for different wards of the hospital. Um, yes, yes. You don't want the yellow socks because that means you're a fall risk. <laughs> um, yeah, so all the, the, they're color coded based on the hospital. They do that themselves. Um, but uh, anyway, tread socks are great. Slippers are great. But here's the thing with slippers. People wear house slippers that get all floppy, they're slide on. Most of the time, a regular old house slipper is not good enough, right? So that's not gonna qualify as good footwear if you're gonna need to walk somebody down the hall to the restroom or something. So you want uh, a slipper or a shoe that has a back, right? That you actually have to put on that is not all smushed and flopped so that they can walk or flop right out of it. And that actually still has tread on the bottom. So you want there to be a good grip on the bottom of that. So, um, perhaps indicating to the family if you notice that their that their slippers are worn out or a little bit too slick for them or not safe you can just hey you know i just noticed today that the, that probably needs new slippers right that he or she needs new slippers and let's go for something that's you know that's going to be very effective for them right so um slippers and then the other thing is is just non-slip shoes right there's a lot of shoes that they make these days that you can get on really easy with velcro or whatever that are a decent shoe that could go outside shoe or inside shoe um, but just making sure that the person has footwear on um, if at any point in time you're going to need to move them around the room or, or, or whatnot. So um, shoes on is much better than socks on um, and barefoot's a little bit better than socks on. Although if you're talking about elderly people, their feet are sometimes quite um, fragile and sensitive. So it's better if they have that covered. Um, so keeping that in mind. Um, Sheets are amazing assistive devices when you need to scoop somebody up, slide them over. You can, you know, if they're on a sheet or a pillowcase or a towel, it gives you a lot of leverage that you can use to move them around. So um, having that around, the other thing that works fantastic for that is plastic bags. I am the bag lady. But a trash bag is amazing, right? So, and we'll, and we'll get to a couple examples with that, but, uh, uh, you know, this is one of those giant leaf bags, right? So not everybody has one of those around, especially if it's an, an elderly person in a small apartment, they probably don't have a 55 gallon trash container, but they probably have trash bag that's something more like that, right? That you can open up um, or even a shopping bag that you can split open and use. But the plastic is slippery and it's very useful that you can use for sliding somebody around, especially if they're heavy, or if they fall in or uh, something like that. So. Yes, my bag of tricks. <laughs> Plastic bags. They're so good for so many things. Um, uh, uh, another thing is just any kind of a strap, right? So um, these are exercise straps with the loops. These are fantastic. They're super helpful for a lot of things, um, If you, especially if somebody really struggles to move their leg or something to help you out. Um, these little uh, types of straps, a yoga strap or whatever, are really, really useful and helpful. Um, uh, so if the family has something like this around, you can, that is something that is, that is um, usable. So I brought a couple of these to show you some things today. Um, uh, what else do I have on there? Gate belt. Has everybody seen a gate belt before? I don't have the kind that everybody else uses that, that's in the picture there. Um, but there's a lot of different ones out there. So it needs to be a really solid, you know, a firm weave and an adjustable, you know, this one is, is a plastic clip. There's the metal one that you have to go in and out. The metal ones are actually a little bit better. There's a reason that they make them that way and that they still make them that way after 70 years of making gate belts. <laughs> um, but the plastic ones are way faster. 